Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast, where we take you inside our gym, CrossFit Palm Beach, each week. It's here that we are creating new superhumans every day, transforming people's lives, helping them reach a level of health they never knew possible. We strive to answer your most burning questions on fitness, health, nutrition, training, motivation, mindset, lifestyle, and more. If you have a question, please email us at info at CrossFitPalmBeach.com. You can also learn more on our blog, livingsuperhuman.com. And if you have a moment, we'd love a review from you on iTunes. All right, it's time. Let's stop being average and start living superhuman. Hey guys, welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast. My name is Andrew Frezza, and we are joined today by Coach B, uh, Whitney Stevenson, Craig Avell, and today we're going to be talking about predicting and preparing for the 2018 CrossFit Games Open. So we're recording this in early to mid December, and uh, we actually just got news yesterday of what the Open schedule is going to look like, a few changes for next year, and then uh, we'll be talking about that as well as some predictions and then how you can prepare once you listen to this podcast in the last, let's say, six weeks or so leading up to the Open um, to have your best Open season yet. So what we know based on yesterday's post on games.crossfit.com is registration for the Open begins on January 11th. The first Open announcement will be Thursday the 22nd and that weekend will be the first Open workout. Um, 18.5, the last week of the Open will conclude on March 26th, that's a Monday, and the regionals will now be hosted in West Palm Beach, so it's coming back nearby at the Palm Beach Convention Center from June 1st to 3rd. Last year it was in Atlanta, a bunch of us traveled up there to support Coach Whitney, Um, but this year it's going to be right down the road, so hopefully we'll have some people to support there this year, which will be really fun. And uh, the teams, which used to consist of a team of six from your affiliate, now is consisting of a team of four. And that's all we know about it. There's probably going to be more details on that, but it's now down to a team of four instead of a team of six. So any favorite updates on that list there? Anybody? Anybody? I like the West Palm. That's, uh, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. I mean, especially for us being, I think, maybe 15 minutes away. I mean, that's awesome. And it was a great event in 2012. Um, we had an athlete go down, Brian, mm-hmm. Brian McGillivray. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I wish he was still here. He was a good guy. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be awesome to see if we can bring some people down. That would be a great uh, great scene. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait. Like, it just kind of, like, had, like, a little smoldering fire, and now it's, like, out of control burning inside of me. So <laughs> I'm really excited that it's going to be here. Um, that was actually my first regionals on a team was at this West Palm Beach Convention Center, and I – actually left like our team got eliminated or something I don't don't even remember it because I'd been doing CrossFit for like a week when I our team qualified so I I didn't even know it was like a big deal so it'll be nice to like go back hopefully and um, I don't know make a show of it also what else did I see um I don't know team of four team of four that's awesome it's gonna shake things up quite a bit I think you'll have game changer yeah like individual athletes going to teams and different teams and more teams so I think that just makes it even more competitive than it was before which it's hard to like fathom that that it could possibly be more competitive but it's pretty cool it'll be awesome for spectators to get a little bit more like one-on-one face time with specific individuals on a team versus like trying to manage and follow six people you know you get four which is a little bit easier to watch so it's mm-hmm. pretty cool yeah it's I think we took it for granted having it like right down the street when we had it a few years back and now um, to have so many of these elite athletes like in our backyard is going to be really cool to watch. So um, we're going to be bringing back our in-house team competition that we did last year. We're still finalizing some of the details, but last year, Team Brittany, Brandon and Whitney, yeah, yeah. That's won right. it. We actually had a three-way tie between Team Frezza, Tony and I were together, and Craig was on our team. I don't know how we lost because, you know. Uh, but anyways, we had uh, Rose and Zach, team what was their every team? rose has its thor every yeah. rose has its thor they were 
at the bottom. And then we had... <laughs> they came in a strong <laughs> second place after the three-way tie. We had Steve, Dom, and Chris that had uh, the three-way tie with us. And then it came down to a beach wad attendance and Brutal tie Team Brittany. Team Brittany. Yes. That's right. Took it. We got those strong community members pulling through for us. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. This year we'll do it again. Um, so if, you, if you're thinking about doing the Open, definitely at least plan to do our... Uh, team competition that we do because it's going to be a lot of fun and it doesn't really matter where you fall. We, you know, it doesn't matter if you're first or last, you're going to contribute to the team and help out. So um, definitely plan on doing that. Um, let's talk a little bit about last year. We never really did a recap episode. So let's talk a little bit about last year, some of the, the different workouts that came out. What was new about last year's workouts that didn't happen the previous year? <laughs> Dumbbells! <laughs> Um, if you haven't seen, we did an episode, I forget, it was like how to prepare for this 2017 Open. We were all kind of talking about like what would come up or what has come up in the past and I mentioned dumbbells. Andrew shot me down. But <laughs> they came out in uh, 2017, we saw two workouts with dumbbells, one with uh, only one single dumbbell and 17.2 which had two dumbbells. So more than likely we will see at least one workout featuring L dumbbell. Yeah, we saw the uh, the burpee combined with the box jump over this time. That was a new thing. Um, bar muscle up showed up again. Lunges showed up again. Those mm -hmm. might be becoming staples from the last year. And then uh, sixteen point four became seventeen seventeen point four. That was our repeat. So they have kept up that theme of a repeat workout. And we'll go later into what we feel is our prediction maybe for a repeat workout going into next year. Um, so yeah, what, uh, what are we thinking? When you guys look at that, what are some of the predictions that you guys have for this year coming up? I'm gonna go with the bike. I, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bold move, Cotton, but, um, <laughs> but I really think it's a bike just because of how consistent it's been in the regionals and the games. And it's been in there multiple times, multiple workouts in regionals and games for multiple years. So. Even though it's an expensive piece of equipment, and even though it may not be the most popular piece of equipment, I think that is a great training tool. Obviously, they can't do running, which is one of those monostructural movements, so that they, they can bike, which would be a good option. And I think Castro has the mentality of, if you don't have one, either get it, or go to a gym that has it, and then deal with it. Yeah, so when you, like, just to kind of hit on something, Brennan said they can't do running. Basically, there's a few movements that we kind of assume probably won't come, mainly because the limitations of being able to film it. So you have to film and submit your score. Um, you also have to like show measurements, so probably won't require people to show a 15-foot rope climb and put them in danger of climbing up to the top and showing it, or to track a 400-meter run, although we could maybe see a shuttle sprint, because we've done the 25-foot distance before. So what uh what do you guys think I, there? I I a hundred percent think either shuttle sprint or handstand walk. I think they've used the floor and kind of like mapped out gyms to kind of get measurements of like what you can and can't do with the lunges. And I've done a qualifier with a shuttle sprint and it was gnarly. Like it was shuttle sprint and burpees and it was a ladder and it was one of the gnarliest things I've done. And I can see Dave maybe implementing that or maybe implementing like a handstand walk and then using the lunges um, as a way to kind of scale that with maybe way overhead or something. So I would not be surprised to see maybe the opposite of what B is talking about and getting in a little bit of like a shuttle sprint or a handstand walk. Like a Just using the dumbbell floor Dumbbell snatch into a handstand walk where a scaled person would do an overhead dumbbell lunge, lunge or something? Lunge, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. We enter the sports side of, of CrossFit where everybody who does the Open is now, you know, in the sport of it. So. You know, Castro's always trying to shake things up, make people guess, and keep them on their toes. We, we didn't see ring muscle-ups last year, which have always been there. Um, in, it's two years now. Uh, it is. It's two years now. I think yeah. they'll make a comeback this year. Um, I've always said I could see pistols coming up because it's something you could scale. Um, the judging's a little bit tough, so I think that's one thing that may prevent that from, from showing up. But I wouldn't put it past uh, the old DC there. They do have pistols every year in the judges' course, which is interesting. They really harp on, like, the one leg versus like you can't move on. Alternating legs, alternating yeah. Legs. So I, I mean, I think that's a good point. Um, and the ring muscle up is a really good point, not being there for two years. And I think going from like a workout that they would do, I think the 150 wall balls, 90 double unders, 30 ring muscle ups, that's gonna be happening. 
Yeah, they like, yeah. Those, they like those three movements together. Yeah. They use it in a different combination another year as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have, I guess if I'm going to predict anything, I'm going to go <clears throat> pistols just because I think of the scalability of it. But I don't know. I, I, I think the, the bike, someone mentioned it the other day that uh, we have some faster bikes in the gym where <laughs> for some reason the calories just seem to turn over faster, even though they're all the same brand, same type. So I think if that's not standardized enough across the board, that would definitely prevent it from happening because the Concept 2s, they're not perfect, but they're pretty close. Whereas we notice a little more variance on the assault bikes. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't know if they're there yet technology wise to support a global competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what other things you guys see? So we're talk we talk kind of like a, maybe a new movement that come up and they've just kind of shown that pattern of a new movement coming up. Um, two years ago or three years ago now, we saw like a two part workout, a conditioning piece into a one rep max. It seemed like the way some people kind of cheated that in the yeah. sense that they didn't really do the first part, they only did the one rep max, and they contributed to a team, that they kind of shied, are probably shying away from a true one rep max again, maybe. Yep. Um, but they've done the ascending ladder, which is you earn your way to a heavyweight or one rep max. So assuming something like that may come again, what movement are we gonna see as a heavy lift, either as a max or a ascending weight? I mean, I think that we might see I guess it was like 16.2, maybe? Squat Something like that, where it was, you know, ascending weight in squat clean and then toes to bar and dubs. Um, yep. I think last year we did ascending squat snatch, so I think they might flip the script on it and go back to squat clean. And, just and that was in the Masters qualifier last year as well. That, yeah. that same thing repeated. So it's kind of cool. Also, to like retest a workout is. Yeah. So I can see that being a retester. Yeah. We've always seen the thruster as like a light, like death mode, you know, 9,500 <laughs> pound, like you are just going to crush yourself over reps. But I mean, you could easily put that, you know, sub that out instead of the squat snatch, make it, you know, an ascending weight and a descending rep scheme of, of thrusters. That could be equally brutal. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, thrusters? Oh. Never know. Dumbbell thrusters would, would definitely be very brutal. Um, and then, yeah, so, uh, what was I gonna say here? Oh, I don't know, I lost track of thought. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, looking at some of the movements that repeat every year, um, kind of the things that we can hopefully count on. Um, in terms of like barbell movements, you have things like the thruster, the snatch, cleans, deadlifts. All four of those movements have showed up every single year except the deadlift did not make it one year. Um, and then for non barbell movements, every single year, double unders have shown up, muscle ups have shown up in one form or the other, bar or ring, toes to bar, wall balls, chest to bar pull ups, and burpees have basically averaged where they come out every single year. So if anything on that list is like double under stands out to me, um, or maybe you're pretty strong and you don't really have the technique on a muscle up, that's something that there's definitely time still after hearing this to earn those skills and learn those skills. Um, and then honorable mention, just because they're newer, I think, you know, it looks like there's a standard for rowing being there every year, even though it wasn't there a few years back, handstand push-ups and lunges. And I think the dumbbells, I mean, I think they're here to stay for sure. Yeah. I'll go to the dumbbell master. What do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think that definitely improving your technique with a dumbbell or just getting used to holding it in your hands. We've have had it in our programming a lot this last year, so we should be a little bit more familiar with it than we were last year, which will be really cool. Um, one of the other things that I think gets kind of glazed over, and probably because it's like, again, not the best movement and the prettiest movement, but just burpees. We normally see burpees show up in the open. We just had them twice last year, burpee box jump overs, and then burpee over the bar. Burpee over the bar. Was that last year? No, we didn't have, that was, a, no, we just it showed up twice a year ago. Okay, so twice ago. in 2016, yeah. 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 And then once last year with burpee box jump overs. I think just being able to understand that there's a technique to burpees, like it's a simple movement and like just being a little bit more efficient at them, um, not just being like more cardiovascular and in shape, but just literally just being more efficient at your burpee technique is gonna help you improve a score that has burpees in the workout, which is pretty cool. And it's not, that much harder to kind of improve that. It's just a little bit of practice and kind of like just analyzing what you're doing. 
I agree. I think there's, there's a certain level of fitness we can all attain, you know, in the next couple months. We can all get a little fitter, but at some point it's like it's more about fine-tuning ourselves within the movement itself. Like you can learn a skill much faster than you get strong, right? Strength programs take a while to develop any sort of gain, whereas a technique change could be literally a coach coming up and telling you, you know, spread your feet a little bit wider so you can pop your hips a little bit differently. I could give you 3% efficiency, which over the course of 100 reps is going to add up a lot, a yeah. lot of energy saved, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we when we did our uh, open last year, pretty much all of us and all of our top competitors did the workout on Friday and then did the workout again on Monday. Some people did it like four times on Monday. I'm not going to mention any names, <laughs> but um, oh man, you know, just through that process, there was efficiencies that were found from like the dumbbell transfers to the footwork on your burpee box jump overs. There's all these little things. So I think. With the open, like yes, we're testing fitness, but like play the game. You know, the game is learn these efficiencies and maximize them, and don't neglect it by saying, you know, I'm going to stick with this like technique. Like we've we have had a year to practice the dumbbell snatch transfer, and you have a few more months to do it. Um, why not practice it? Why not do a practice session of just practicing transferring the dumbbell or just practicing your footwork on a burpee box jump over? And knowing when that workout's called, you're like. I know exactly how I'm going to get over this box or get over this bar. Um, what other things can people do? What other things can people do in that last like six weeks to to get ready for the open? Like, what is the open mainly testing? What what are some things that you guys could see being beneficial um, from the time this podcast is released? I mean, we saw a lot of longer style workouts where pacing was super important. Um, or it was just more prevalent, I guess, in my mind this last year. And just being able to kind of like hone in on your pacing and how exactly you do your movement so you can kind of like conserve your energy for an 18 minute AMRAP or a 20 minute AMRAP or something that's for time but might take you 20 minutes to finish. Um, just being able to kind of learn more about yourself and how you're pacing that out is gonna help you get a better score and not kind of like, with the open, it's like, it's exciting. We have Friday night lights, you have a judge, you have like, different things than you normally have in a workout so you're a little bit more like pumped up and like it's really easy in the open to just go out the gate and hit the workout super hard and that doesn't necessarily correlate to getting your best score like it actually might mean like okay how do I tone this down a little bit so when I do the workout I'm calm my heart rate is down and I can actually gradually build my pace throughout those 16 minutes of work or whatever it's gonna be to get your best score yeah you're going off of like your pace um, Bergeron talks about like doing the workout twice and I think that's a really good point like you have the time why not do it do a dry run or maybe you go all out and you're like all right well maybe that worked maybe it didn't work where like some people on 17.5 like you had to go all out to kind of get the best score you wanted um, other people maybe not but at least gives you a chance to kind of like have like a learning experience and then you hit it again Monday knowing the information and data you can pull from that and then kind of see if you can get it better yeah, you got you to build that awareness now. It's, it really is a skill to be able to look at a workout and figure out how, how hard can I attack this and still hang on 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later. So, I mean, that really should be an ongoing year-long process. But if you're, if you're not already kind of doing that and self-reflecting after workouts to say, like, was I consistent? And maybe having the data to support it rather than just thinking in your own head of, like, yeah, it, sound, it seemed like I was going about the same pace. Um, your best workouts are always going to be the ones where you, you have a nice consistent pace and then you speed up just a little bit at the end. Or you know, maybe you're so, you're so uh, close to redlining that you maybe even drop off slightly at the end, but it's basically the entire workout is performed at almost the identical speed throughout. I think uh, the open workouts always bring a, another level of pain that a lot of us don't touch that often. Um, another good way to prepare for this is just to, to do an open workout or two in the, in the weeks to come, you know, do 17 points. I feel like the first week is always something that's, the movements are accessible enough to everybody and it puts everybody through the same ringer of just uh, absolute pain. So maybe do, you know, a workout from the open from last year or pick one that you don't necessarily feel as comfortable with the movements, something that just doesn't look like something you'd want to do with your day. and. Uh, do it anyway and get, kind of get used to that feeling. Um, another thing is the open scoring system is different than like regionals or games or different than actually what uh, maybe 
people are used to in other competition formats. So if you talk about like the regionals or games, it's reward based. So if you finish first, you get 100 points. And then like the difference between first and second is 10 points. The difference between like 20th and 21st, still one spot difference, is like two points. So you get rewarded for your strengths. In the open, if you're bad at one movement, that could be like tens of thousands of people that have passed you. And that, that having not, not having any weaknesses is so important that the best thing you can do right now is look at that list of barbell and non-barbell movements that we said and figure out the weakest thing on that list and make it a little bit better. Yeah. If you only did that, it's going to have the biggest effect if, if the scoring is important for you. Um, or potentially if a lot of people have this goal, which is like, I just want to RX everything, figure out which of those movements is the, the least likely to become an RX movement for you. Maybe it's like, hey, I struggle with a 95 pound thruster and that always comes up. Or I struggle with double unders, that always comes up. Figure out how you can get to that like nice base level of that threshold that's going to get you to an RX. It's mm -hmm. a good point. I have seen a um, number of occasions of, of people bombing one workout, doing phenomenally on the rest, but because of that one workout, you know, you, there's no chance you could get first, 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 first for the next four weeks, and you can't make it anymore. So yeah. I know, you know, even if that's it's not a contention to make it to regionals, it's still a something you want to just kind of achieve within yourself to be a more well-rounded athlete rather than all these peaks and valleys from week to week. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So um, we'll kind of wrap this up. Pretty short episode. But one of the things that I thought was really cool and just want to throw it out there is that I liked last year having like dumbbells in there and also the way regionals was programmed with like the kettlebells, the balls, and no barbells. We didn't see a barbell in the first two weeks of the Open and the entire regionals. I think it's really cool how it's it's kind of brought those elements back into our community in a stronger way. And I think our, bat, our athletes have benefited from it. Our programming and our, uh, just the variety of the stuff that we're hitting on a weekly basis is to me more fun, it's more challenging. We've done some workouts with like light dumbbells in class or light kettlebells for deadlifts, which you would think, oh my God, that's an easy movement for uh, a, dead, a light weight for a deadlift and it's, it's been super spicy. So what are your thoughts on that in terms of like, how the open kind of dictates maybe how affiliates program or how athletes want to do certain things throughout the year? I mean, I think it's so hard to predict. It's like you're just looking at everything that you could possibly do and everything that's already been done and like trying to come up with something new and like, I don't know. I think that just being able to have, like you're going back to like your big, brush strokes with everything you're doing. You're taking, you know, things that you don't use all the time, kettlebells and D-balls. You're taking training from just doing an AMRAP to doing like an interval style, kind of like how they did at the games. They had like a, a work requirement to get done, but then they had built in rest in between. And we've like implemented some of that into our workouts. So it's just being able to kind of like step back and like, yeah, we have these specific things. There are specific weaknesses we need to work on, but like really when you're trying to tackle programming, you're trying to do like these big, broad brush strokes to get everything just so you have at least touched it before you get to the, to the open. You don't ever really want to get there and be like, well, I've never done this before and let's hope things go well. Um, I mean, I think in certain instances that might happen where you get somebody that has never done a ring muscle up and then they do it in the open because of the environment. But I think if you're looking for your best open score, um, you're going to want to feel at least somewhat comfortable with whatever comes your way. And the only way to do it is to kind of be broad in your training. It's kind of having like that CrossFit Games approach, like the CrossFit Games athlete, they have to train literally everything because they don't know what's going to be hitting them. Um, and then I think like, I, I forget which games athlete said it, but they said like, if you're not following CrossFit main site or just knowing what they're posting, like you're missing the boat because they post everything from a nine mile run to a three rounds of a 50 meter swim and X, Y, Z, whatever it is, they're hitting so many different variables. And I think that gyms don't have to be that extravagant, but they definitely have to be like you're saying, Whitney. That, that broad and obviously mindful of what's going on in their gym, but um, definitely cover a good amount of things in yeah. variety. And then I think if something shows up that you haven't really done, like I'm sure for a lot of gyms, dumbbells last year was a surprise. Like not a lot of people trained with dumbbells that kind of like were collecting dust in a lot of gyms. So that was his sort of like, all right, let's do this. Let's bring them out. And it was uncomfortable for a lot of people, but not to look at that and be like, oh, well, 
there goes my you know chance or there goes my open or there goes me Im improving my score from you know top 500 to top 350 or whatever your goal is it's like well just have an open mind know that you've been doing crossfit and you've been doing constantly varied training so it'll probably apply even though you haven't necessarily you know been taking a dumbbell course like you'll probably still be fitter because you've been doing this the whole year yeah there's no we know there's a surprise so there's no surprises yeah. right yeah. yeah cool all right well, let's wrap it up hope you guys have a great open and uh hopefully i get you drafted team on my Whitney. team <laughs>